Hey folks, it's Mike. Um, today I'm at uh, Kelowna Park in, uh, in Winnipeg and uh, I'm going to be uh, testing uh, a few of uh, uh, you know, my telephoto zoom lenses. Uh, recently upgraded and uh, just want to compare uh, the new lens versus the, uh, the two old ones. Although the new lens is really a used lens so it's old but new to me but you get the, you get the idea. Anyway, um, I probably should switch lenses so it's easier to actually, you know, see more, well, less of me, or whatever you want to say. Anyway. All right, this is the, uh, the Tamron 18 to 270 uh, f 3.5 to 6.3 uh, lens uh, with vibration control uh, aka image stabilization um, it's actually not technically my lens it's uh, my wife's lens she's uh, she generously let me borrow it from time to time and including today and if I don't get back in uh, in one piece um, she'll uh, she'll stop me yeah anyway um, it's a, it's a decent lens, but uh, the variable aperture, you know, the 3.5 to 6.3, it's kind of meh. But uh, let's uh, let's see how it does. All right, this is the uh, Canon 55 to 250 uh, f 3.5 to 5.6 lens. Um, it's a good cheap lens. I think I bought it for about 250 uh, originally. Um, has decent results, but uh, I've been wanting something uh, something better, something uh, more legendary, something like that. And uh, this is the Canon 7200 f. 4L series lens, uh, L standing for uh, legendary, um, linguini, lettuce, uh, large, it's a pretty big lens, I'll say that. Um, it's also a very sharp piece of glass too, because I mean, whew, some nice sharp images. Um, so I will say this is a lens that I've been wanting for a long time. Um, I, I suppose ideally I'd want an f2.8 but you know I, I can't afford that one so yeah this one I got used for 800 and uh, I think it was good of course uh, some of the reasons you'd want a telephoto zoom lens like uh, 70 to 200 or 55 to 250 uh, is so that you can capture uh, you know landscapes in the distance uh, or um, hunt for, okay, shoot, no, uh, photograph birds uh, from a distance because, you know, you don't want to disturb them and have them fly away while you're trying to take a shot. That's happened way too many times, to be honest. Um, uh, you know, and uh, you can also uh, get some nice fine details uh, that, uh, you know, otherwise you'd have to be really close up with a macro lens, uh, you know, if, if, if it's in a spot where you can't get that close. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just gonna go around uh, Kildonan Park here. Uh, maybe start out at the uh, the Witch's Hut, make my way uh, around to uh, the uh, the duck pond slash skate rink. Um, although being spring, it's more duck pond than skate rink. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention um, what I'm actually going to do is um, start with one lens go from uh, you know the the witch's hut to uh, the duck pond and back again and uh, and switch to the second lens uh, and then do the same thing and then uh, switch to the third lens um, and then uh, repeat uh, so I'll probably start with the uh, ooh, which one should I start with uh, probably the Tamron I'll start with that one and then go to the uh, the Canon 55 to 250 and uh, Finally, to uh, the 7200.
And uh, I will say to, to make it sort of somewhat equivalent, uh, I'm going to be uh, shooting uh, with the 70 uh, millimeter focal length, which all three lenses can do, but it's, uh, like for example, this Tamron that I'm currently shooting on uh, can go as wide as 18. So I'm going to have to actually really, uh, yeah, meet sort of meet. I won't say in the middle, but basically meet the minimum, I suppose. So yeah, I'll start with a 70 millimeter, uh, move to probably 135, and then uh, 200 or the equivalent of. Uh, so let's get ready to rock and roll. And to uh, give you an idea of how focal length actually affects how close you get, um, this is at 18 millimeters. That's at 70 millimeters. That's about 135. And that's about 200. So, uh, yeah. Um, I will say my bird phot photography skills uh, leave a lot to the imagination. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if I'm far away, I still can't get a good shot because uh, I can't spot them. Um, and when I do spot them, by the time I do spot them, they're gone. So, uh, so far, I've only been able to get uh, a photo of a squirrel in a tree. That's about it so far. Um, so, yeah. And of course, it being spring, still snow on the ground, um, I decided not to wear boots. Don't know why. Um, figured shoes be nice. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm gonna have wet feet after this, I know it. Well, um, I did want to go to the bridge. Um, I guess maybe that's not happening via this route. Of course, last time I was here was uh, last month in February. Ah, wait, hang on. Probably was a month and a half ago. Anyway, uh, anyway, the last time I was here in Kildonan Park, um, it's nice and snowy, nice and cool, no puddles, um, no wet feet. Yeah, I, uh, I should have brought a change of socks and shoes. All right, uh, done with the uh, Tamron uh, 18 to 270 lens. Uh, time to switch out to the uh, Canon uh, 55 to 250. Uh, so just uh, toss the uh, Tamron back into the bag. Oh, good, it didn't fall out. Whew. We'll say with the uh, Canon 55 to 250 and the uh, Tamron 18 to 270 lenses, um, they aren't expensive lenses, but of course they aren't cheap either. Um, the cheapest, I suppose, of the three was, uh, well, this Canon 55 to 250, because uh, I think brand new it cost me about 250, 270, something like that. Canadian. Uh, Tamron was probably another 100, 150 beyond that, I think. Um, and uh, brand new with the, uh, the 70 to 200 uh, uh, lens. I bought it for 800 plus tax. But brand new, those things go for 12, 1300 bucks. And I think I got the earlier generation lens too, so yeah. All right, done with the uh, Canon 55 250 lens, uh, and uh, time to switch up to the uh, Canon 70 200 L lens. L for Linguini, 
Let's find out. Anyway, I'm done uh, shooting all the uh, the test photos that I wanted to, to shoot for today uh, here at Kildona Park. Uh, I'm happy that uh, you know it's it's finally warming up and all that snow we've got this winter is finally going away. Thankfully, um, I'm also you know I'm I'm not also in terms of the lenses. Uh, I'm not saying that the Canon 55 to 250 and the uh, the Tamron 18 to 270 are bad lenses. They're still pretty good lenses. It's just, I was looking for something a little higher quality and uh, I was in a position to get it. And uh, with uh, those two lenses, uh, other two lenses, I um, guess I'm gonna have to sell them. Anyway, back to the studio. Wait, no, I don't have a studio. It's gonna be an office. Hey folks, it's Mike. I'm uh, back in the office uh, just to uh, show you uh, uh, basically, the differences between uh, all three lenses, uh, the, you know, the Canon uh, 70-200L, uh, the Canon 55-250, and the Tamron 18-270 lenses. Um, I'll, uh, I'll note that, uh, first of all, that um, all of them use the exact same exposure settings, uh, which is 1 30th of a second, f11 uh, for the aperture, and ISO 100. Um, I focused on the exact same spot on the uh, the roof of the witch's hut for all of the photos, and uh, I used a tripod because, well, you know, less shaky hands, you know, or less having to deal with shaky hands, really, and uh, you know, just to make sure that everything was consistent. Um, as you can see, with uh, all of the photos uh, from all three lenses, uh, right in the middle pretty sharp or relatively sharp but uh, with the Canon 55 to 250 and the the Tamron 18 to 270 uh, as you move towards the edges of the witch's hut you'll you'll notice that it gets a little bit softer with uh, the Tamron and the uh, the Canon 55 to 250 um, but I mean it's not unacceptable uh, I'll say that um, and um, I'll also note that uh, in terms of uh, chromatic aberration, which is something I'll, you know, probably throw up, uh, you know, somewhere around here-ish, I don't know. But uh, basically, uh, um, with uh, the, uh, the, the Canon 70 200 you see less of it uh, compared to uh, the Tamron and the, uh, the other Canon, um, which at the end of the day, isn't a big deal because it can mostly be corrected, uh, you know, in uh, post-production, whether you're using Lightroom or, um, you know, Capture One or whatever, um, or even Photoshop for that matter. But, uh, you know, I mean, you'll notice it mostly in places like, uh, say, up towards the uh, the top of the witch's hut, you'll see the uh, branches up there. Um, with the Tamron and the Canon 55 to 250, you'll see some sort of slight discoloration usually shows up as like a purple or a green. Um, and you'll also see it, uh, you know, showing up on the um, sort of the, the area right around the gable of the witch's hut. Um, it's, you see a lot less of it with the Canon 70 to 200 than you do with the other two. Uh, Again, as I say, you can co correct that in post-production, but the less work you got to do, the better, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? Well, not much, actually. I will say with the, uh, the Canon 70-200, it's not the perfect lens, but it's a very, very good lens. Um, and I'm also not saying that the, uh, the other two are bad lenses. They're actually quite serviceable lenses, you can still get some good results. It's just that with those two, you'll require a little more post-processing work just to sort of match the uh, the 7200's results sort of straight out of the camera. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, the the Tamron and the, the Canon 55 to 250 are still good affordable lenses. I mean, like, for example, the the 55 to 200, uh, 55 to 250. I, I only paid 250 for that. Um, this is it, quite affordable for uh, for a camera lens. 
Um, but, you know, I mean, what can I say? I, I, I wanted to up my game, as it were. And uh, I think I kind of think I've done that with the, uh, with the new lens or newer lens. Um, but yeah, and uh, I guess I'll send it back to my past self back in April. Um, I will say I don't miss the snow. It's, it's late in May right now and it's, I'm seeing green grass everywhere. I like that. But anyway, back to wherever I was. Anyway, uh, time for me to, uh, to leave. And uh, I suppose at this point I can just say, uh, do the usual, like, comment, subscribe. Um, ciao, folks.